All right, subtracting decimals. I'm Daniel at the Assessment Toolbox. Today, I'm going to show you how to subtract some decimals like this. Let's jump in. So here's the great news. Subtracting decimals is a whole lot like subtracting whole numbers. And if you know that you could subtract this right here as whole numbers, you are going to be able to do this one over here. There's only one main difference, and that's what I'm going to show you. It's the decimal point. Just to warm up, let's subtract this one right here. 1 minus 9, well, it can't happen, so we have some borrowing. 11 minus 9 can happen, that's 2. 6 minus 3 is 3, and 1 minus nothing leaves us 1. 132. Great. Now here's the cool thing. We have the exact same digits over here. 1, 7, 1, 3, 9. 1, 7, 1, 3, 9. Same digits, same spots. These digits are going to be the same digits in the answer. But the answer is actually not going to be 132. We're going to have to figure out what to do with that. So here's the key in subtracting decimals. You need to line up the decimal place value right there so that you are subtracting the same size pieces from each other. Let's look at that. Here's one of the easiest ways to think about this. Right here, I've got a group of 10. Right here, I've got a group of one. So this is one piece, and this is one 10. It's one group of 10. And the number 17, this one stands for my one group of 10. It doesn't mean just one circle. It means one group of 10. So I've got to be careful when I am subtracting or when I am adding numbers. I need to go one place value at a time and deal with all of the ones by themselves, all of the tens by themselves, all of the hundreds if there are those by themselves, and not mix them up because that's where I get some crazy answers. So what does that have to do with decimals? Let's take a look. So here's what I've set up. Five and nine tenths minus four. We're going to run into a problem. If I just subtract as it is, I'm going to get an incorrect answer down here. And here's why. It's the place value, specifically the decimal placement. What does this 9 stand for? Well, it stands for if I've got a group of 10, this means I have 9 of them. So there's 5, there's 4. Okay, I've got all but one right there. That means 9 tenths of one piece. But this 4... I shouldn't have it in this place value because it's not talking about four tenths. If I had a decimal for it, it would go right there. This means four holes or four groups. It means I've got that one, but I've also got this one. And I've even got two more over here. It means I have four holes. So if I try to start with nine tenths of a piece and take away four holes, that's not going to work. So what do I do? The answer is line up the decimal. I need to scoot this over so that I have my ones places aligned. This is gonna come right here so that I have five holes, five ones, minus four ones. Let's take a look at that. All right, I scooted it over. That's looking a lot better. Great, now when I subtract it, it's gonna work out. I have five ones minus four ones. That's gonna work. What about this gap right here? Well, how many tenths do I have? Little leftover pieces on their own. I don't have any, so I could write zero. And that's fine. It doesn't change the value because it just shows that I have zero of them. Now I've set it up. My decimal points are stacked. I have a place value column here of the tenths place. The TH reminds us it's to the right of the decimal, not the tens place over here. This is the decimals lined up. And this is the ones place. Great. All right, let's start on the far right side as always. Nine take away zero is nine. Now in my answer, I'm gonna need a decimal here. Five minus four is one. My result is 1.9. Let's see if that works. Now here's a great way to check your answer. Estimating, estimating is your friend for this. So five and nine tenths or 5.9 is close to, it's about, Six and four is already a whole number. So what's six minus four? Well, it's about two. And one and nine tenths is really, really close to two. It's only one tenth short, actually. 
So by estimating, I confirmed that my answer is about where it should be. This is correct. Let's set up another problem. And this time I'm going to include a hundredths place. It's the same idea. I need to stack my decimals. Otherwise, this isn't gonna work out. This is set up incorrectly. If I subtract just like it is, I'm not gonna get the correct answer. And I might be a little sad about that. Why is that true? I have two hundredths, which if I've got a big grid here, ooh, two little tiny hundredths minus eight tenths. And eight tenths is most of something. That would be most of it. If I'm subtracting, I can't start with two hundredths and subtract eight tenths out of it in the same column. Those are different comparisons and it's gonna lead me to some wrong calculations. So what do I do? I line up the decimal places so that each column is one place value all on its own. Each of these columns should be the same place value between numbers. So let's set that up by moving digits so that the decimals are lined up. Great, my decimals form their own column right here. And now we have a hundredths place, a tenths place, the decimal, and the ones place. We can subtract it now. If I want, I can add a zero. It does not change the value. And it gives me something to see right there so that it looks more orderly. Let's subtract. Two minus zero is two. Zero take away eight. Oh, it doesn't work on its own, so we've got to borrow. That's going to become a 2, and this 1 will come over. 10 minus 8 does work, and that gives me a 2. Decimal in my answer. If I don't include it, it's going to have an incorrect answer. 2 minus 1. So it leaves me with 1 and 22 hundredths, or 1.22. Let's see with estimating if that's about right. 3 and 2 hundredths is about 3. And the closest whole number to this one is 2. So 3 take away 2 is 1. Is my answer about one? It sure is. We confirmed it. Let's try an even harder one. All righty, what do you think of this setup? Hopefully you're thinking, no, it's not right. We don't have the decimals lined up. We gotta do that first. Thirteen and two tenths. And now my two tenths is in the tenths place, one spot right of the decimal. My ones column is here, my tens column is here. All the way down, we have digits that are in the same place value, which means I can compare them and subtract them without causing some weird things to happen. If I want, I can include this zero because it does not change the value. Two minus zero is two. Three minus two is one. Zero take away three does not give me a positive answer. So I'm gonna borrow. 10 take away three is seven. I didn't say it, but I already included my decimal right here. That needs to be in my answer. And three minus one is two. 27 and 12 hundredths, 27.12, fantastic. Let's see if that's about right. Our estimating is that this is close to 40, and this is close to, yeah, we could do 13. And that's going to give me 27. You could round it a different way. You could round this bottom one to 10, and it's going to be 40 minus 10 is about 30. And yeah, this is still about 30. All right, as I set this one up, you tell me what the error is. Okay, let's take a look. What do you notice? Yeah, it looks funky to me too. We do not have the decimals lined up. They're in two different columns which means we're comparing place values that are out of position. It's not gonna lead us to the correct answer. We need to shift this over so that the decimals are in one column, giving me a tens place, a ones place, and everything's gonna line up. All right, that looks better. What do we do about this part right up here? That's a blank spot, and could I add a zero? Well, if I add this zero, does it change the value of what I already have here? It, no, it doesn't shift any digits over, so that's fantastic. Now I can subtract normally. So we start on the right like normal. We have zero minus four, which doesn't work. We've got to borrow. 10 minus four gives us six. Six take away six is zero. Five minus one is four. So we have 406 as our answer. There we go. 
Let's check it with estimating. This is about five, it's even closer to six. And this is 1.64, that's closer to two. So we should have something close to four. Six minus two is four. 406? Four? That's not even close. What's going on here? Hopefully you saw the error that I made a few seconds ago. Can you figure out what that error is? I forgot the decimal place. It needs to go in our answer right there. I wanted to show you what happens when the decimal is not included. So there you go. You've seen it a bunch of different ways. I think you're ready to tackle problems like this. And if this video helped you out, you can help me out by giving it a thumbs up. Go for it.